Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, The Last States of Europe, in which we're playing as the Republic of Ireland. Now, why the Republic of Ireland? Well, I asked on my community tab which nation they'd like to see next, and the Republic of Ireland won. So, but if you'd like to read about the Republic of Ireland and how it got to this point, please come over here and read it as I will scroll down slowly, or you can just pause the game. But, I want to apologize ahead of time, because I'm not Irish. And I'm going to butcher a lot of words and names that are Irish. So I 100% apologize. So if you would like to, you can always correct my pronunciations in the comments below. Please let me know. So in the next episodes and the subsequent ones, I will not continue to <laughs> say the wrong words, such as Aaron Gobrock. I'm sure I said that incorrectly, but shame of the giant. Eamon de Valera has long held a dream close to his heart. A dream of a united Ireland, free from Anglo dominance during World War II. The then Taish accepted a deal with the devil to make his dream come true. Should the Republic of Ireland collaborate with the dude regime, the Germans would support them in an invasion of Ulster, which was just barely accomplished through the sheer amount of German manpower thrown at the Emerald Isle. Like all Faustian bargains, however, the price is rarely one worth paying. German megacorporations control vast sectors of the Irish economy, and countless paramilitaries in Ulster threaten total revolt against Dublin. Fianna Fáil only holds on to power through the ruthless political suppression, press censorship, and imprisoning those who speak out too loudly against the regime. Faced with increasingly lack of confidence in de Valera's ability to govern, and Fianna Fáil's supermajority in the Dáil starting to crumble, Sean Lemas, de Valera's chosen successor, kicked the old man upstairs to the largely ceremonial presidency. Lemas has since tried to steer Ireland out of the nightmare that is de Valera's twisted dream, however. Should Lemas prove inadequate to the task at hand, those around him can convince de Valera to use the one real power available to his office, the ability to appoint a new Taoish. I am saying that so wrong. I apologize. Oh my goodness, but spend. And you probably cut that down too. That's probably fine for us. Uh, the GDP is looking not too bad, actually. I know that's not too bad, 2.5% versus 3.2%. Currently, we're getting some civilian construction too, as well as vacuum tube computing. Shame of the giant. But I want to read the next focus first. The Dublin's Ock Bishop. Support of four hardliner TDs in a cooperation will increase with the hardliners, but will reduce with the other coalition members. The Northern Three. Oh boy. Okay, never mind. I want to do something else first, so let's read this first. But to autocracy. Sean Lemas. From the lack of an official residence for the Taoish. One of the most irritating quirks endemic to Irish politics. While even the Bulgarian monarch, his only independent counterpart at the Einheits Pact meeting, could boast of a palace he was stuck in his Dublin apartment. There was at least one advantage to the housing situation, his son Noel. The poor bugger actually lived in the building and carried out much of the same tasks as Tsar's Boris' servants. Whenever Lamas came home, he could find his dinner served and plates cleaned. Today, the meal wouldn't be just for him, but for Charles Hawkey, too. Huggy. Huh. While Lamas hoped that the night's discussion would not stray far from away from Noel's soup, he defeated his own ex expectations by veering into the northern county's situation while explaining the differences between the stews in both parties of the country. Blaney. Lamas's English had acquired a brewery accent. If not for him and his, uh, what do you call them? Blaney boys, yes? On another sip of beer graced the Tawish's throat. Everything would have been fine after 61, but he had to insist on that bad word cabinet post. The liberals too, you know. They helped ruin everything as well. Lamas's accusatory finger pointed vaguely in the direction of his son, Noel. Don't ever forget. Giving in to your enemies is a mistake. I allowed those pain-in-the-booty cosmopolites, Lynch and Koresh, to cook up a deal with the liberals and look where it got me. Now I have to bend over backwards every time I want to pass a gosh darn bill. Hockey was in a state of interjecting where the depreci... Dep uh, deprecatory... Deprecatory remark about the state of Fayan Gael, but I didn't get far before Lemas started up again. You know, Charles, you're like a son to me. Apart from the boy here, you you were the only man I could trust. I rely on you to save this party. No, this country. While his 34 year old son made a muttered protest against his description as a boy, Charles Hockey quietly cringed. If the old man knew what was really going on, or maybe he did. Man, I am butchering these words. I apologize. So, before we do anything else, so we have Irish investments. The AD will. Oh, is the German mega corporation's tendrils in Ireland relies on their money and fears their displeasure for the entire Irish economy hinges on their continued investment in Ireland. If they were to leave, there'll be severe consequences. Oh, we're going to select a project to begin in. To successfully complete a project, construct one level of the required buildings in a given state in the region within the time, li time limit. Successfully completing a project will increase approval as well as GDP boost, while failing a project will displease investors. The deadline of the project can be pushed back at the cost of available funds and investor approval. Cool. And currently we are what? I guess we are authoritarian Democrats. Oh, Charles is a despotist. 
So maybe I think for this ca this campaign, Brandon Korish, Seamus Tuomi, Sean is Tuomi, redacted. Oh, redact. That's kind of cool. What was it? Not not Strangeheim. We have there will be blood. Oh, that's not good. We have humiliation of a giant. Oh, that's not good. Uh, not much to gain, Mr. Schmittler. And we have little Wehrmacht. All right. Oh, we're going to train or edit things. That sucks. And we have civilian budget boost and stuff like that. Okay, so more than three. Oh, my goodness. We'll increase it to three, but we'll reduce with the hardliners. Um, civilian industry. Extend. Push back the deadline of the project. Efficiency. Show and approve final action. Request funding. Add well funding. Fund military civilian factory. Available. How much funding do we have? 50% approval, $50 million, 60% presence, abandoned efficiency, plus plus. The NIC. We also need to know about this. The North Irish Constabulary as a government agency that is tasked with policing the Northern I County's special zone. Officially a subdivision of the Guardia, the NIC spends most of its time acting as a government's head or hand in dealing with the myriad paramilitary groups that infest the Northern Counties. The somewhat Sisyphean nature of the task is appointed to the Nick has left the organization in a semi-permanent state of being understaffed and underfunded, leaving no love lost between the constabulary and the government to which it pledges its allegiance. Corruption is also rife within the organization, as they must sometimes make less than savory deals simply to survive. Cordial, a little bit corrupt. Oh, I'm going to screw this up so badly. Oh, we have even paramilitaries here, too. Ireland has had a tumultuous history, one that has spawned many paramilitary and terrorist groups. The three main groups are the Ulster Volunteer Force, the Irish Republican Army, and the Irish Citizen Guard. The Ulster Volunteer Army is a pro-British, pro-Unionist, and anti-Republican organization which is the primary paramilitary for those who resist Irish occupation in Northern Ireland. The Irish Republican Army is a radical leftist organization whose main aim is to combat fascist and German influence in the country. The Irish Citizen Guard is a relatively new offshoot of the IRA, however, its age has not stopped it from becoming one of the more violently active groups in the country. Respecting uh, anger, respecting a ceasefire, powerful, very strong, respecting ceasefire, displeased. On the Nick, huh? Um, I don't know. Funding? I want a civvy. Can we do that? Show, approve. Oh, oh my gosh. There's so much here. I do apologize for stopping the game because we need to... I'm looking for like the the uh, Senate. Is there a Senate option? Because the three, more than three. Oh boy. A Labor TD, a Liberal TD, and De Valeris. Cooperation will increase by three with those. Reduce the hardliners? Or... Oh. Hmm. Archbishop, dude. Um, I really don't know. At the time of this recording. But I want to get more daily political power. Four hardliner TDs. A labor, a liberal, and a valero. So, screw it. I'll just go to the du Dublin's Archbishop. There's one man in Ireland who wields a significant power over the people and the government. This man is none other than the Archbishop of Dublin, John Charles McQuaid. The Archbishop, as a personal friend of De Valera, and will definitely help us in our cause to rally the hardliners back to our side. If we can rally enough of them, we can definitely begin to take back the Fianna Fáil. However, there's one thing that stands in front of us. The issues of women's rights in Ireland is a subject that is hotly contested. Brendan Corish and his followers have begun to campaign against the Magdalene laundries that are in Ireland. These asylums have been created to make fallen women appear again and closer to God. While the idea is seen as a thing of the past, it brings in large amounts of money for the hardliner cause. It is in our best interest, but that these laundries stay open for the future. And we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm, but privatized instead of the Germans. Investor app approval increased by 20%. Ooh. Consumer goods goes down a little bit. Lower tariffs for the Germans. New taxes. Raise German tariffs. Nationalize German corporations. Oh. Decrease investor approval. So, request funding. Oh. Approval goes down, but can we, you know what? Approval will go up. You know what? What do we do? That one? And then we do that one. So it's 45%. Present? Present. Approval. Presence. Ooh. There you go. Is that really bad? I don't know. I guess we're going to go to keep going. Ooh, spend $5 million. Fun. How much funding do we have? I guess we have a lot over there. I want to get more civvies. Can we do that again? We have $60 million, so... Not bad. 
Man, it changed, but the situation. A few blocks away from Leinster House, Jack Lynch and Frank Aiken stepped on a Fanta at the Old Shanessy Cafe. Christ, Jack, this German stuff tastes like crap. The much younger Lynch had a stronger stomach, but couldn't disagree with the old dog opposite to him. The drink of the treaty. Aiken let out a laugh before raising his hand. The waitress had come with the bread. As she put it down on the table, Aiken's eyes widened with indignation. What the bad word is this? The young one jumped back as Aiken examined the food. Roggenbrot? What does that even mean? Look at this crap. I could hit you over the head with this. It's like a gosh darn brick. He turned towards the woman. Lady, can you bring us some decent bread? As a former cabinet minister screamed at her, the waitress tried to explain to him that there was no other type available. Until Lynch intervened to calm Aiken down. While the girl managed to get away, Aiken didn't stop. Those jerrys are everywhere, Jack. Even in food, why can't they leave us alone? Because Lamas won't stand up to them. And anyone who does ends up in a jail cell. You'd think that after how many votes the liberals and us got in the last election, he'd lay it off a bit. But since last year, he's jailed more, 800 more. For bad word's sake, this man will drive Fiona Fial to ruin. Him and his blood buddy in need. Frank's euphemism for Niall Blaney got a hearty laugh out of Lynch. I mean, it's incredible, Jack. Lamas puts the trade unionists in prison and darn near Sieg Heils whenever Hitler dumps all of his crap into our economy. But those stupid dudes at the Labour Party keep propping up the government. We can't get rid of him either, not when the liberals keep saying that they'll only support the coalition if he's still there. The world is a mess, and we need to do something about it, Frank. Lynch sighed if someone was going to lead liberalism back to the forefront. It was him. Frank was too old, perhaps. Fianna Fial was too old a vehicle to do it as well. It's no good, and this is probably really bad to do, but I don't want their presence here. I don't mind their approval, but we want more money. And how are you doing with all this building stuff? What's well, not that much. Um, your average day in the special zone. Well, you picked the right place, Doherty. This force needs an honest cop like you. You could have chosen to stay in Dublin. Have an easy career, but you weren't interested. You're here to fight the good fight, solve cases, right wrongs. Very well then, but Ulster isn't pretty. There's no sitting on a fence. You have to choose, take, you have to choose sides. Take a brown paper envelope to look over all the filth that goes on in Blaney's backyard, or look behind your back every five minutes in fear of a prot or a provo trying to murder you. Inspector Eamon Doherty wondered on the words on which the chief superintendent of the Garda's Northern Counties Department had left him with two months earlier. Truth be told, he transferred to Belfast for, for the pay raise. His daughter was getting married soon and paying for the weddings wasn't cheap. Perhaps he thought there was an element of careerism to it as well. Yes. Success in cases here would make him friends back in Dublin. There was nothing wrong with that. Whatever his motivations, Doherty had come to the conclusion they weren't worth it. The counties which Doherty once helped unify as a volunteer during the war were a mess. The Northern Ireland Const Constabulary themselves supposedly part of the Garda, were unreliable as all heck, and each day came with a new terrorist attack from some deranged faction or the other. Today is no exception either. Don had barely broken when his presence was requested by the radio under the car bombing. Parking his German-made patrol car alongside the much older models of the Northern Ireland Constabulary, Doherty got out of the Dalmer and headed to see the crisp remains of a Morris Oxford, cordoned off by a dozen policemen. Who who was it? The inspector glanced at the Nick patrolman closest to the vehicle. Willie O'Brien. An IRA big shot. By the scorn in his voice, Dirty could tell the man was a Protestant. Where do you want me to start? There's a few witnesses to talk to, but you could also take a look at the car registration first, or try searching for something meaningful in the rubble. Let's go check the remains. Oh, God. Is there a second bomb there, too? Um, that's not bad, actually. The deficit, though. Hmm. Inspecting the remains. Amon Darty stepped around the bombed out hole of the car. It was covered in black suit and the doors had been blown off. He tried to find anything that would tell him why it was done. However, all he saw were destroyed seats and a steering wheel stuck in a tree. It was a word or a work of a terrorist, and he could tell that the bottom of the car had been blown up. Across the road, a few officers had been in the process of trying to clean off and decide for the license plate. Car bomb, he muttered to himself as he walked around. Something kept nagging at him in the back of his head. He knew that the IRA was basically gone and the Ulsterite groups weren't that bold to bomb a car in broad daylight. However, if it was the Ulsterites, it made sense. They didn't even know who the poor step was. Didn't matter now anyway, as they had a job to do. He knew it was going to be hard to find something with evidence. So far, they had found half a shoe, with the other half being destroyed. As Amon did another lap around the car, something cut his eye. On the ground, reflecting out the sun was a pair of glasses. Amon stopped and distracts and put it on his gloves. Or put on his gloves, picking up the glasses and putting them in a small bag. As he walked back to his car, he noticed witnesses being asked questions by police officers. They had been assembled a little way down the road. As he got into the car, he gave himself a dilemma. He could either phone the station to try and find a connection to the car using the license plate. It was an older model, but should st still check out. Amon could also help with interrogation, however. He could be seen as unwanted due to his presence. Either way, he was going to find out why the bombing occurred. Let's ring the station. Let's time to ask questions. Uh, time to ask questions. The Vanquished. James Dillon sat at his desk. Filling out paperwork. It was always the same for him, being the last one inside the fine Gaila headquarters. His desk was surrounded by photos of him and his many fellow members of the FG. He smiled before remembering the truth of the party. They hadn't won an election in 22 years, longer than how some of their, how old some of their party members have been alive for. He sat and rubbed, rubbed his temples. 22 long years of playing second fiddle to Fianna Fial and the rest of Ireland. He looked to his watch. It was half past 11. 
James picked up his things into his briefcase before shutting off the lights and making his way to the main lobby. To surprise, Liam Cosgrave and Oliver Flanagan had pulled some chairs out and been in the middle of a conversation before they saw James and waved him over. The men had been discussing mostly personal things, such as their families. The point of the Faya and Fael had come up. Mostly the current issue with the liberals as Liam and Oliver talked, James listened. Once the two men had finished, James spoke. Well, to be fair, I agree with both of you. Our time is coming, however, this is not the time to discuss this. Anyways, do you lot want to go out to the pub? Asked James. The two men nodded as they walked out of that HQ on the way out. James thought to himself, he was going to retire soon and Oliver seemed like the more qualified candidate. He could do much more for Ireland than I, I believe James. And off they went. Ah, oh, the last conquest. I'm sorry I'm taking a while to get over here, but... And get this stuff done, but... Five million dollars increase construction speed? Uh, increase the national d debt by a large amount. It's going to get increased construction speed. Mm, lower tariffs for Germans. Approval? Presence? It will increase by 20%. Do we want... I don't know if we really want more presence. New taxes? Oh, wouldn't it be bad? But I want more approval anyways. More approval, less influence. If possible. Request funding? Presence will increase. More money, huh? What is extent? Push back the deadline of the project. I don't think we even have a project, but a special zone for the special people. Far away from the busy streets of Belfast, the former Hillsborough Castle proudly flew the Irish tricolor. Converted into the main administrative office of the Northern Counties Ministry, it served as the residence of the province, province's governor, Neil Blaney. The company, the IDF, man guarding the approaches, thought it no surprise that a black Mercedes made its way to the building's guardhouse at noon that Friday, for it always did. Blaney's extra-official meetings with the other members of the cabinet, far away from the Lemassite halls of power in Dublin, were secret to no one. Charles Haughty, for his part, rather hoped that their regular encounters would be more secret. Why exactly did Lemass kept trusting him as he did when he was so well known that he'd go up to the NCSZ every weekend was a mystery him and one that unsettled him more every day. <clears throat> As soon as he got off his ministerial car, Hattie was, uh, was quick to spot the gray-clad figure storming out of the building. Lieutenant Colonel Kelly, good afternoon. The IDF man opposite him gave back a courteous remark, but ultimately continued on his way. Hattie, Hockey knew it couldn't be good. He proceeded up the stairs to the Georgian construction until he got to Blaney's office. The Donegal TD, working at his desk, looked the same way as always, albeit his hair seemed to have receded a bit more than Hockey could remember. His unmistakable gruff voice called out to Hockey, or I keep saying his name wrong, Hockey. Uh, shortly after he entered the room. Hello, Charlie, on his desk. A picture of a young, far younger Lieutenant Blaney uniform from the war. How are you, Neil? And by the way, what was Kelly doing here? Hawk, Huggy let his concern be expressed through the tone of his voice. Jim Kelly came back talking all about his concerns over our friends. Nothing to worry about, really, provided you've got uh, those signed defense ministry orders, don't you? He nodded. By the way, Charles, I'm doing more than fine, as, as are the counties. He let a burst of laughter. Now, what is our boss in Dublin up to, Charlie? Treason is afoot. Confirmation bias. Joseph McCarran, correct, asked Ammon. The man sitting across from him simply grunted and turned his head away. The questioning had been difficult so far, with the man simply refusing to answer at times, especially when it came to his occupation and what he was doing when the bomb went off. Well, he'd always talk about the same, take, walk the same route every day. I was turned around, about to go inside my house before I heard the explosion. Next thing I knew, the car had gone up in flames, and poor old Breidega was dead. That's all I know. I swear on Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. As much as he thought that McCarran was lying, Ehrman unfortunately liked anything that suggested otherwise. After thanking McCarran for his time, which was met with a now pissed off, uh, <laughs> Ehrman tried to compile all the information he gathered. The side of the bombing itself, the make and model of the car, McCarran's testimony, something just wasn't adding up. But that was something for people with a high, high far pay rate than him to determine. At last, Ehrman wrote down the conclusion of this report. Culprits, likely UVF. Cool. Raise their salaries? That would probably be good to do. Assassin strikes? Cool. Root out corruption? The paramilitaries, huh? Uh, we probably want to repress everybody, right? Pro-unionists. Well, hmm. Radical leftists? Well, with us, for this campaign, we're probably going to go down with authoritarian democracy, so we probably want to... If we suppress the IRA, the anger will increase. That's probably not very good. They're strong and displeased. Well, Atlas shrugged. Eamon de Valera looked through his bookshelves. He had read all these books before, something even twice or three times. Many of them been one of historical nature, ranging from ones written by Plato to more modern books written by Thoreau. All of them had ideas that had struck with De La Vera. Photos had lined his work desk as well, many of them with his former friend and now rival Sean Lemas. The photos stung De La Vera, making him remember things that hurt him. The pain of a friend turning on him, with the whole Fianna Fáil following. Their doodly coalition with the labor, it was all going to ruin Ireland. De Valera then decided to call Sean McEntee to meet with him in office. While McEntee's official abilities had been to serve the Taoish, he didn't interact with them, them interact that much with Lamas. So he was going, so he was a perfect candidate for De Valera to talk to. I apologize for my mispronunciations. 
It doesn't make sense, Sean. How Lamas would turn his back to me when the whole party with it. I've become a ghost in politics, nothing more than a figurehead for the government. All the power of Taush gone like that. Sean nodded. I sold the country to the Germans, thinking they would respect our boundaries. Instead, we got forced to be policed by them and forced into the so-called Einheitspact. Unity, my booty. Ma McIntyre tried to comfort De La Vera after hearing him rant. I don't think Ireland would forget you, Eamon. Your contributions to Ireland are internal. Before Sean could continue, he checked the time and had to leave uh, to meet the moss. Alone, De Valera began to weep silently, hoping that he would not be forgotten. He wept as he realized how old he truly was. You know, the, uh, the Irish citizen guard. Do we just want to repress everybody, maybe? The UVF. They're focused on the Nick. The UVF. Ooh. Ooh. Pro Union is pro British? Do we, do we want to be pro British here? I don't know. They're very strong. And they're extremely angry. We got corruption. I have a greater opinion about us to be less corrupt. Raise our salaries. So basically the same effect. Let's do about corruption. No, actually, they're cordial. So they're friendly, and now they're a little bit less corrupt, which is good. Borman, oh, that sucks. Car bombing. Oh, I failed the car bombing. Uh-oh. I C G terror. Smoke rises over Protestant Ulster. The Irish Citizen Guard, Northern Ireland's most co competent and enigmatic paramilitary organization, made a showing of dominance today, setting up a concealed statue bomb made from German military ordnance in a Protestant neighborhood of Belfast, wounding several and leaving several Anglo Ulster citizens in critical condition. The brutal efficiency of the attack was marked by the trademark silence of the Citizen's Guard, spray painting their flag near the bomb site, but otherwise saying nothing. How are they well, so well armed? No, oh, that sucks. Closing time. It's been a quiet night at O'Flaherty's pub. Sales were low as always, and there were very few new faces. Adam O'Flaherty, the new owner, made enough to get by, but it was a struggle day in and day out. The church bells of Dublin doled out the time midnight. Time to close up, Tom. Adam told the one remaining patron still seated at the bar, go home to your lovely wife and kids, and I'm sure they'll miss you with all the time you spend here. Fine, fine, I'll get out of your hair, Tom chuckled. I'll tell Sarah you said, said hi, I'll see you tomorrow. Adam shepherded Tom out into the cold night air. Tom was a decent fellow, all told, kind-hearted, hard-working, went to church on Sundays, not too well off, Adam supposed, but that was a lot of Ireland these days. Things weren't supposed to have been like this. His pa had fought in the war against the English when Adam was just a boy and would always tell stories of how great Ireland would be when she reunited with her brothers in the north. That's all the TV seemed to talk about, how great having the Isle back together was for everybody, even if the Protestants in the north hadn't seemed to get the memo. Locking up for the night, Adam caught a sight of the VW car, uh, put, puttering down the otherwise quiet street. Now, if it wasn't a metaphor for Ireland's ills, Adam thought to himself, the darn Germans had swept over into Ireland with their fancy promises and offers of assistance. But everybody got the darn Taoish and knew that they were stuck sucking the lifeblood out of the Irish people. Half the businesses in Dublin seemed to be a German run these days, and people even had the gall to ask if he'd stocked away any of the piss the Germans had the audacity to call beer at this pub. Adam decided to walk down the street towards his home. He'd always loved his home, as any true Irishman would, but though he felt he would never admit it, it grew harder and harder every day to feel proud to call himself an Irishman, as if German beer was any better than a good Irish stout. I am screwing this up so badly, I know. I know. Uh, how are we doing with this? That's not too bad, actually. That's really not too bad, considering where we're at. Oh, we're out of political power. Lower tariffs for Germans? Raise German tariffs? Uh, request funding. Uh, approval just decrease, which is not good. Um, how do we increase approval? We gotta wait. What is this? You must. Oh, we can have a state selected. Civilian industrial project should decrease by 5 million. Oh, investor presence will increase. Boys will be boys, though. Audrey McCormick dreaded her walk home from her work at the grocery each day. Not for the distance, it wasn't too far, really, nor did she dread it because of the, the scenery. The city streets of Dublin were actually quite nice. No, the reason she hated her walk home was because of a certain construction yard she passed by every day on her right. The men working in the yard, although. Audrey would soon, sooner call them pigs, had grown infatuated with her, and would often loiter around the entrance to the yard in a drunken stupor, trying to woo her with her supposedly manly charm. Setting up for herself had only intensified their efforts, and no one had been willing to help her, no matter how she complained to, or who she complained to. Boys will be boys was always the answer. She tried to duck her head as she walked past the yard, but it was no use. The pigs were out in full force today as they spotted her at once. Hey, there she is. She could hear one of them slur. Why not come and spend some time with us today, gorgeous? Audrey sighed, resigning herself to the inevitable. She ignored the catcalling as best she could, as always. Boys will be boys, she told herself. she gone to the police once to complain about the harassment. It's certainly not illegal to tell a woman she's pretty on the streets, one had told her. Try to think of it as a compliment. Boys will be boys after all. That had been the first and last time she had gone to them with concerns. Audrey stiffened as one of the men slapped her on the rear as she passed by. She turned around, cheeks flushed in anger and embarrassment, but was only met by roaring laughter as the men patted themselves on the back. Audrey turned and walked away a little bit faster, a little bit lesser. Blinking away tears, she tried her best to ignore the jeers and whistles from the yard behind her, and there's nothing more she could do. Boys will be boys, after all. Um, couldn't she t take a different different way home? Like, if that's going to happen, 
you normally just take a different way home, but still one party. For decades, Artaush de Valera, now the incumbent de Mas, having kept the Republic of Ireland running relatively smoothly under the leadership of Fionn of Fael, sure, there have been hiccups, requiring us to make deals with the Irish labor that we really rather would not have made, as well as do some shady political practices, but Fionn of Fael still governs. Sure, the political pro opposition may cause a corrupt cesspool of uh, political violence, but they fail to understand the nuance of the position we find ourselves in. Ireland sits on the knife's edge, balanced between political pressure from Germany, growing Irish nationalism, <clears throat> and calls for complete political independence, and tensions from rogue paramilitaries and terrorist organizations in Ulster. Only Fianna Fáil have been able to keep Ireland from falling apart at the seams, and only Fianna Fáil will continue to be able to do so. This is why we must continue our governance at all costs. We can bring bills to the table. Okay, so I want to at least do civilian industry. Um, which one are we building up currently in? We're doing it in Dublin, which is, makes sense, I guess. Dublin. Uh, which one is Dublin? Yeah, I thought Dublin was on the coast, yeah. So, let's come over here. Go over here. And infrastructure. Stage 1, civilian industry. Decreased by $5 million. Sure. So we have 400 days to do that. Efficiency plus plus. Massively increases industry. Uh, let's see, what do we have for budget? Budget right now is $69 million. That's not too bad, actually. Um, you know what? And the debt is currently what? $1.24 billion? That's not bad. What if we did efficiency plus plus? I said May before. Now it's December, so we'll definitely get it done by the end of the year. That's not too bad. Here, take another one. Seven million dollars is not great, but it is what it is. And hopefully that'll affect us too. So we have nine. That's not too bad. So instead of December, it'll now be September. Ah, oh, that's actually really good. Wow. That's not bad. Still one party though. Uh, cannot be canceled manually, so it requires one party. Labor protection bill. Initial has labor protections on the people's side. Well, why not? We'll try that one. <clears throat> a democracy runs on the will of the people. This means that a good leader in a democracy should hold the same opinions as the people he rules over. In this respect, Sean Lemas is a great leader. Lemas listens to the people he governs, structuring policy based on the most immediate needs. If the people want a new bridge over the river Shannon, then Lemas will get the funding to build that bridge. If the people want a strong military to protect them, then Lemas will make the military strong. If the people want to remove protections from Irish Protestants, then, well, Lemas certainly won't oppose removing said protections. It's what the people want after all, and doing what the people want will keep both them voting fine and fine out of the polls, and make sure that everyone knows that Sean Lemas is on their side. Where do you think you're going? McTiernan, badge number 2378, the young Garda officer said as he showed his identification to the checkpoint, I'm here to patrol the neighborhood. The senior Garda officer looked at the identification and said, you don't know how this works, do you? I'm sorry, sir. Your neighborhood's a no-go zone. The UVF is still too strong in the area, and if you want to go in alone, you won't come back. All law enforcement activity is suspended, and we will have strict orders to not go inside without precautions. No law enforcement? But how do we keep it under control? UVF most does mostly, said the senior guard officer. They take care of the small stuff, like kneecapping drug dealers and making sure nobody does any serious hooliganism. And if we absolutely have to go in, we can do it with some armored cars and soldiers, but walking around the park trolling your ability club is not going to happen. Then what do I do if my neighborhood is run by the proddies? Go back to HQ and play cards until the next car bombing. And maybe your landlord will drop your rent if you agree to walk around their properties with long uniform. That's all I have to offer, Sonny. Sometimes 26 and 6 don't make one. Go figure. Now, I've been told that we need to keep a lot of PP. Oh my gosh, there's even more. Oh, managing the old giant. Oh no. So the Dio consists of 147 Tech Chica And uh, the Final Final Labor Party Coalition occupies 84 of those seats. We need this board at least 74 TDs to pass a bill. Every bill has a unique amount of supporters that can only be seen while bills in progress. Oh boy. The Fianna Fáil consists of four distinct factions split into two wings, the Liberals and the Labour, which make up the left wing, and support leftist measures, workers' rights, and welfare, such as that. The De Valeris and the Hardliners make up the right wing, and support conservative measures like Catholicism and cooperation with the Germans. Approval is a measure of the Fianna Fáil's popularity. Oh boy. The stronger a wing, the faster the aligned bill will pass. Cooperation resembles how cooperative the different factions are. The more cooperative our coalition is, the faster we can pass bills. Every bill has three levels, non-radical, moderate, and radical. Um, Okay. A bill can also be either left-wing or right-wing. If we don't have the 74 TDs at the end of the voting period, if you're not, as long as we have 70 or more TDs, we can sure strike up a deal with the opposition wing for votes. There's no current bill. Oh my goodness. Approval. Power. Left-wing power is pretty small. Um, I want to increase civilian spending, but we do need to keep our political power, though. Ooh. I want to be able to build as fast as possible, which is going to be really nice. Eh, yeah, we'll do it once. Why not? There you go. So instead of September, now it's going to be, well, I guess... Not that much faster. Okay, never mind. We're not going to spend that then. But on the people's side. <clears throat> wow. 
I'm not prepared for Ireland, apparently. Oh, baby. I love more founding, though. So we failed that. So I should probably look up which ones we should do and did not fail. Greater opinion. A little bit less corrupt. Repress these guys. I don't know if we should repress them or not. Very strong and displeased. Repress the... Oh. Strong and displeased. The Irish Republican Army is probably the one we want to repress, right? They're extremely angry. So they're probably going to bomb us soon. <laughs> oh, man. I'd like to root out corruption, too. But after this, let's see. We'll get stuff done. Bill said it's overview. I mean, there's nothing there, so. Let's go ahead and do religious education. IEDC. IECC. State Corporations Bill. There's so many bills. Um, what the left has left. Let's go with this one first, and then maybe jump over here. So, the IECC bill. There was one thing in our history that many of us can agree on that was a mistake that was taking the Germans up on their offer. In due time, we had been shackled to their trade laws and forced into the so-called Einheitspact. This has led to a disaster for our economy as we no longer have direct control of our government. Instead, the Germans nudge our economy and government to shift their way. One of the consequences that we have come along with the Germans is that the mega corporations that have tens of thousands of slaves working in Germany. Niall Blaney, the bootlicker, submitted a bill to the Oreactus. It calls it the Irish Economic Cooperation Council. We need to figure out how the bill come, how we will deal with the bill. If we accept it, it will bring us closer to Germany. However, it will keep Blaney at bay in its five to raise our GDP. We need to decide. So I'm going to assume since we're already in the Highlights Pact, probably Lamas would probably be the way to go. I mean, we'll see what happens. Let's just try it. Why not? Make the bill more radical. Um, let's see. 11 out of 16 interactions. Wow. Cooperate. Empower. Reduce. Police. The Nick won't like this. So we have cooperative 70 out of 84. Huh. Average cooperativeness is 61%. Power approval. Bell status. Ooh, 31. So does that actually equal 16 plus, uh, 16 plus that is 47. 47, yeah, it's 70. Um, we need to interact with some of these people here. But we got to keep spending civilian spending just because we need more political power. Um, oh, and we can cut that down too. That's fine. There you go. That's who do we want? Hardliners are good. Belarists. Liberals. Well, six versus five. The LP. Encourage. Three will support and power this wing. Um, four labor teams will do this. We lose political power and war support. I don't like that, man. Um, encourage. I guess we can encourage it. There you go. 73. We need a little bit more. Cooperativeness is not very good. Make it more radical. Gain support from right five right wing TDs. But lose support from three of them. Or right, 72 now. Even more radical. As in the third stage. Or 72. Oh, vacuum tube computing is very nice. It's got some more research speed. Why not? As it probably really... I just want to at least do this once. So, encourage the liberals to lose 30 political power. Um, three TDs. That's all we really need. So, there you go. Alright, so... There you go. I don't want to touch it anymore now. Civilian project. Oh, we're going to need more money. Dinner with these guys. Investor approval increase. Um, approval presence in the country will decrease. How do we increase approval? That's not bad. Dinner with the German corporate members will probably be good to do. So we want to decrease our presence maybe a little bit? Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. That's not bad, but actually, how many factories are being used right now? 45%. Wow. That's quite a bit. Request funding, approval, presence, shall increase... Uh, I don't get more money. I like that one, actually. It's not bad. We need more... Less presence. Less presence. Will increase, decrease by 10% versus 10%. <clears throat> Let's do that one. And then approval. There you go. 40%. That's still not bad. $12 million. Not bad. So we do have 75. So that's all we need, right? That's all we need for this bill to pass. Final stage. Next, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Civil Rights Act. Very cool. Okay. The bill passes. For once, the government's ministers have felt relief after their hard work. The government's bills passed through the ordeals of Irish lawmaking and secured a majority of votes, deputies' votes. A copy has been, sin, has been since sent to the, press, the president and signed into law, ending this particular tussle between the members of the government. 
Such an outcome must not be taken for granted. Successfully passing legislation through the dial is well known to be the exception and not the rule. Though the passing of this new bill will certainly help the government build more confidence amongst the people of Ireland, who are always grateful for some sort of change. However, as encouraging as the development may be, the government does not have time to celebrate its victories. The political alliances and rivalries in inside the dial still pose a threat to the uncertain government. The unending trials or trails of restraining the dial should eventually inevitably go on for a while longer. Yet there is hope that with the passing of a new act, Ireland is one step closer to genuine change in a brighter future. A change for the better, or so we hope. Slightly part of the right wing? Oh, we get civilian and military factory. Moderate German industrial influence, consumer goods, construction speed, and resources. Okay, cool. Not bad. We, we need more approval now, too, as well, which kind of sucks. Um, Increased presence? I don't want any more presence, though. Request funding? Presence will increase a little bit, but there's... No, oh, I don't want approval to, to go down. Oh, that's not bad. New taxes, though. All right, so I guess what's up next after this? <clears throat> Start a corporations bill? So I guess we can maybe do all these. That'd be kind of cool. Labor protection? Let's do finance, maybe. Initiatives of finance bill? Despite how we may seem to the rest of the world, the best efforts of the Taoist of the Republic of Ireland remains functionally a democracy. Lamas, like all leaders in a democratic system, simply cannot spend Ireland's money as he sees fit and must seek the support of the Dial Arian the Irish Parliament, to pay for the various projects he has envisioned. Our Minister of Finance, Jack Lynch, has proposed a budget for this fiscal year, leaving it much the same as last year's, but with one key difference. Irish businesses will be subsidized at the expense of the German mega corporations. Lynch has done has done about as well as he could ex be expected with this proposal. Now it's time for the Taoish to get to work and push the proposal through that dial. All right, now we're going to lose more political power. Stage 2 makes the bill more radical. Support from the left wing? Um, we have 73. We just need a little bit more, actually. Approvals, 58.5. Um, I, I want to, like, ping-pong between both of these, because we need more guns, actually. We need way more guns where we're headed. If I keep suppressing people, is that good or bad? That's probably bad. The ICG, they're just pleas. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, UVF. Extremely angry. They're probably going to do a bombing, then. Power will decrease. Extremely angry. Well, oh, Hardliner denounces us. Considering your current build to be a step too far to the left, a hardliner, Teotio Dalla, has announced that he would not, he would not be receiving support. Furthermore, he has urged other members of the Dal Arian to vote against it. Let's make it somewhat harder to get the bill passed, though if we can rally enough support behind it, we should be able to push it through. Great. And not a good great, it's just great. Sure, another civvy. I love civvies. So, uh, make, uh, I don't want to make the bill more radical. I think it's okay. Uh, we need to get some more support from somewhere here. LP? I don't want to spend any more, too many more guys. We need just two, right? Two or three. So cooperate, maybe? Co concessions. Four of them. Uh, hardliners. Uh, cooperate. Oh, wait. Maybe that's not what we want to do. Whoopsie. 72. Well, that's not good. Third stage? Well, whatever. Oh. There's only... Uh, hardliners. Uh, cooperate. Uh, no. Empower. Expand the police. The North Irish chairs won't like this. Nice. I'm probably screwing this up so hard, man. I apologize. But I'm not going to make it radical. We'll do. We'll try to do as many bills as possible, but I'm not going to try to make things too radical here. We'll see what happens, though. And it's June, and we should be done by September 22nd still, which is very nice. I just want more civvies, man. 71% presence. Nice. Oh, that's really good, actually. We get that. Nice. Uh, max factories in the state. Sure. Why not? Finance bill. And we should be on the last step. We have 76, which is nice. <clears throat> 70 support 74 to pass a bill. The bill passes. Nice. If you'd like to read about that again, please go ahead. A change for the better. No help. For the better, or so we hope. Or so we hope. Cool. 40% investor approval. We need more approval, though. Uh, that's not bad. More. I don't want more presence, though. Hmm. Less approval. Well, I mean. More presents. Do we get any money out of that? Not really. It's fine, whatever. Cool. So we got that one done. Let's see. Pollution control? I'm going to try that one. As 1962 dawns, the world finds itself on a precipice. The Hawaiian missile crisis, Hitler's ailing health, and the threat of a global thermonuclear war finds the world cowering in fear, awaiting the end. Life goes on, however, and the Fianna Fial continues to govern for the good of the people of Ireland. On the docket now, the issue of pollution. The TDANA, members of the Irish Diala, have found that the enormous amount of pollution created by the factories of the German mega corporations is a large problem to their constituents. The solution. A bill has been proposed that would impose regulations on these factories, forcing them to at least put a token effort into cleaning up after themselves instead of simply dumping their refuse into our rivers and skies. 
This will likely annoy the mega corporations, but this is what the people want, and it's high time we remind them that this is Ireland, not the Reich. And then we'll do two of the other side's bills. So, currently we have 70, so we just need a little bit more from the hardliners, maybe, and that's it. Cool. Turkey's exploding. I'm just going to do this one real quick. Encourage three. We need four. Um, there you go. 74. That's all we need, right? To pass a bill. Request more funding. I want more funding. I really do. Um, it's very strong. Extremely angry. If they're already pissed off, we might as well do it, right? Uh, IRA. They're still strong, though, which kind of sucks. These guys, are we supposed to suppress everybody here? I'm not really sure. A liberal support so. Our current bill, considering by many to lean more heavily to the left, has been well received by the members of the Dial Arian, sharing those same political sentiments. As such, a liberal Teachja Dala has firmly placed his support behind it, it pledging to vote for its passage and calling on others to do the same. Excellent. 75, we got whole one more. Whole one more. All right, so I guess we'll read the next one then after this too. Oh, there goes those guys. And we'll probably do the religious education. State corporations. I guess we'll do that one first. Coalition's bickers. On a good day, a well crafted bill can easily slide through the dial, facing little opposition on its pathway to passage. This is certainly not one of the good days. As we try to speak about the many benefits this bill would bring, we find ourselves countered and challenged at every corner. Every concession we attempt to make, however, is rejected by either the bill's opposition or by its own supporters. The bill's passage, meanwhile, seems no further assured. What a disaster. Oh, did we hurt ourselves? 75? 75 is still pretty good, so I don't know. State corporations. Maybe we had judged Neo Blainly too harshly at first, it seems. While it may not be the best representative for the Ireland and the Iron Heights Pact, the IECC bill has created jobs that we desperately need. Our GDP has also arisen and should hopefully continue to grow thanks to this new bill. Now, riding on the success of his last bill, Blainly submitted a new one called the State Corporations Bill. This bill seems to alleviate some of the issues that we would have with increased German presence. It calls for the creation of state-owned cartels that will control the energy and shipyards of Ireland to make sure that Germans cannot get their hands on them. From what we've heard coming out of Germany, it seems that the whole country is in turmoil. It's probably our best interest that we pass this bill and make sure Ireland is safe. Some pollution regulations, all right, not bad. And? Oh, we're doing population control, or pollution control, which should finish up very, very soon. Oh, we have, oh, we have quite a few days left for that. Oh, okay. Cool. So, we're doing okay here. We're doing definitely okay. Not great, but not bad. And we should have the factory done within a month. Oh, okay. oh yes. Oh, that's going up by nine days. Nine days faster. Pollution control. Nice. State corporations. 30% for us, huh? 30 whole percent-ish. And how much money? $10 million. So what happens if we actually get this done? <clears throat> There'll be severe consequences if they were to leave. They're probably going to leave. And, but if Borman does win, he's going to come back, though. It's a completed project. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, construct one level of required building in a given state and region within time limit will increase our approval as well as boost GDP. So that's good. We'll get it done within a month, so that's not too bad. More funding, more less approval, huh? Hmm. But we'll get more approval that way. Uh, dinner with them? Oh, we could do that, I guess. It's only 72% of the bill. Oh, wait, the bill fails. Wait, what? Empower the left wings? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Well, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. That's my fault. I... Hmm. Things are not adding up here. You know what? Let's let's go back and redo that one, maybe just a little bit. My apologies about that, everyone, but I wanted to make sure that we actually pass the bill and be at least somewhat successful in this episode, but a model of compromise. As the bill enters the diet, those who support it hold their breath. It seems excess worry is unnecessary, though. Whenever the bill is challenged, its defenders are able to mount a strong defense, or at least offer enough compromise to the point where the opposition is willing to concede. The dial, it seems, as a well-oiled machine and its members capable of putting aside personal differences or squabbles for the good of Ireland. Truly a success. For a stage, and we have 74 out of 84, which is, I think, all that we need, right? So, hopefully, this time, we'll actually be able to pass it, and it's good that we got more political power, because I actually radicalized the bill and had to spend, like, 60 political power to make sure that we could actually get to this point to managing the old giant of passing the bill instead of failing it. And it's extremely radical, apparently. Go figure. The bill passes. A change for the better, so we empower the right wing. Got two more military factories and one infrastructure and add more to the debt. Well, is that worth it? Well, maybe not so much. Let's see. Civilian budget boost. Yes, please. Oh, they have elections over there in uh, Scotland. Cool. For $10 million. Ah, uh, screw it. Give me another civvy. Hopefully we get some more money after doing this. But after this one, the right is right. Increase approval. More money. 
presence will increase, more infantry equipment. We're going to need more infantry equipment, but let's do a religious education bill first. What are the values that define an Irishman? A good Irishman is a brave, proud, firmly Republican man who loves his country and his family. More importantly, a good Irishman is a God-fearing Catholic. As a stewards of Ireland and her people, it is our responsibility to praise or raise the children of Ireland to follow this ideal. We will introduce a bill to the Dial to reform the education system, to focus on teaching Catholic moralism over newer, less necessary subjects. By controlling what is taught in our public schools, we can influence societal development and ensure that every child knows that the Irish values are Catholic values. We're going to need so much PP. Do you radicalize the bill? Uh, we're kind of okay. 65, pick up in Belfast. At 10.16 a.m., a large convoy of vehicles came down the sub suburban street. Four VW buses came down the street. While well, guarded police vehicles covered the streets beside them. Parking in front of one of the rows of townhouses, a group of armed men got out of the buses and took positions. Some covered the street side while others entered the building. This is an extract of an informant there. was good reason to believe that they had been compromised. Not exactly an unheard of affair for the Northern Irish Constabulary in a Protestant neighborhood, but one that had to be performed with perfection each time. Every one of these maneuvers had, was designed to prevent any unwanted complications and to show the Protestants who were really in charge because the UV, UVF would all take, a, take every opportunity to test their defenses. And such an incident happened that day. As the informant was being led out of the building, a car full of young men came down the street and was noticed by the ones on guard outside the park convoy. That was suspicious, even more so when they parked right next to the convoy. The constabulary officers were more than aware of what could come next, and when the passenger door of the car opened, they took no chances. Did they have any weapons? Who were the boys anyway? No matter, there was no time to wait. They jumped into the VW buses and drove off, leaving the bullet-written vehicle on the side of the street. Extractions aren't always painless. Alright, and... Uh, do we... Completed. Very good. Transistor computing is very nice. Which I thought we just got earlier, but cool. That's pretty nice. All right, let's keep focusing on our economy and stuff like this. I'll have to do more of this stuff. More output, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Request fundings. Can we do this again, maybe? I love civvy stuff. But money will go down. Presence will increase by 5%. Approval is not that much higher. Let's go to that one, I guess. Seven percent January, not bad. Slightly better than before. 0.91 every day, it's not too bad. There goes America. Goodbye, America, doing their stuff. Um, send weapons to the NIC. You have a greater opinion of us. We need more guns. The right united. As Hardliners and the Develeras work together to pass their current bill, the cooperation between the two has gotten stronger and the more close-knit, resulting in a much stronger sense of unity between the two right-leaning factions of our government. We can expect that as a result, they are much more likely to vote together in the future. The coalition strengthens. Okay, cool. Well, since they're extremely angry anyways, they're middling, that's good. The ICG, the UVF. They're strong, and they're, everyone's extremely angry. So they're all extremely angry. Well, then, whatever. I mean, they're all angry. Why not just do that then, right? Alright, so managing the old giants. 65. Oh, that is not good. Hmm. Cooperative is not, is not very high. Compromise? The De Valeris won't... Every faction won't like this, but let's just go ahead and encourage them. That's fine. Hmm. Encourage. And we need at least one more group. Liberals? Well, we're out of PP now. God dang it. Hopefully get more PP somehow, some other way. <clears throat> That's not good, man. Past this, we're just going to make it, like, really, like, not, um, uh, huh. Not very radicalized for a lot of stuff. The bill passes. Good. It changed for the better, hopefully. Part of the right wing. I can get more daily political power. Good. Less research speed, though. But, you know, it is what it is. And now we have no PP. Go figure. The right is right. Or the what left has left. Focus on welfare. I guess we do that one next. As it happens every year, we must review the state of welfare in Ireland. Recently, we've had to deal with an increase in job protection due to the state, current state of our economy. While the Liberals are the smallest group in the party, a large part of our support rides on labor supporting us as well. If we want to continue to keep their support, we need to make concessions to them. There's been quite the issue recently with women's rights in Ireland. The Liberals have begun to improve their rights and begin to pass laws making them equal to men, giving them a large rise in support, along with the increase in public transportation for children to get to school. While many of us disagree with the issues that the Liberals are fighting for, we cannot risk our coalition. We should send this welfare bill through the parliament to see if we can maintain our coalition. Hopefully it will hold. Media regulation bill, huh? Alright, so let's take a look here. 69, if we really want to do that, ooh, they de-radicalize it. We'll gain some support. Cannot be de-radicalized. Then radicalize again. Okay. Um, there you go. That's a little, slightly better. Well, ooh, 71. As long as we have, what is it, 70 or more? 
Strike up a deal with opposing voters. Opposing wing for votes. Okay. So, we could probably still get this one passed if you just give it like a week. And then... We're going to really be out of PP. Oh, man. Oh, boy. We need more money, too. And actually, let's see. Dinner. Increased approval. Meh. Increase more funding. Approval. People won't like that, but whatever. I want more civvies. I love civvies. And... All right. Liberals, MPs, hardliners. Encourage them. Expand the police force. North Irish terrorists won't like that. Ooh, four hardliners? Sure, why not? I guess the terrorists don't like that, but... Hmm. Do we like terrorists? Maybe. Maybe not. Root out corruption. I mean, they're ex all extremely angry, but then they're, they're Irish, right? So, are Irish people extremely angry? Hmm. Hmm. 75, though. We'll get it passed, which is nice. De-radicalize it, so. Peace conference is over, and Guiana's probably dead. Yep, they are dead. All right, and we'll see what we get. We fell passes, a change for the better. More stability, more costs. Oh, oh, low pensions. Do we really want that one? Oh, man. Left-wing power is not very high. What the left has left. Labor protections. As much as we wish it were otherwise, a fine file does not govern Ireland alone. Having formed a coalition with the Irish Labor Party, it is important that we sometimes take steps to appease them so that we, they don't leave us and have our government fall apart. An issue has recently come to light that should allow us to keep them happy for now. A series of deaths caused by the industrial accident at a factory owned by IG Fobbin. Workers have begun to strike after a series of deaths caused by industrial accidents and are demanding safer working conditions. We will oblige them. We will propose a bill that will impose safety regulations in these factories, mandating break times and regular safety inspections to keep accidents to a minimum. Well, as my damage relationships with Germania, it's better to risk that than have our own government fall apart. At least for now. So we have... Oh, this is getting worse. This is getting worse every time. De-radicalize it? Yeah. 66? 60... Oh, that didn't even work at all. 68? Oh, that's... Ooh. That is not good. Peace in the Middle East, huh? I don't mind de-radicalizing it, and then getting some more support, if possible. Come on. We're going to need way more PP for this. I don't know if we'll actually get this one passed. Um, anything else down here? Can we, like, lower terror support? Yeah, we can. There you go. They're all strong. They're extremely angry, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, there we go. 70, that's... 70, come on, man. 70. We can probably still get four from some of these groups. So, sectarian violence and its consequences. Get the F word back. The Garda officer swung his billy club at the crowd of angry Protestants, driving them away with the rest of his men. Inspector Doherty laid on the ground, trying to process what had happened. He'd been trying to take a look at the scene after he hopped out of the police car and was busy trying to take stock of the crime scene when some of the car crowd had broken through the police lines and hit them on the back of his head. They'd been kicking up until the point where the guard had saved him. You all right, Inspector? Asked the guard lieutenant as he ran over. If you hadn't shown up when we did, the proddy dudes would have strung you up on a tree. Doherty looked, took the hand. Wouldn't have blamed them if they did, he said as he pulled himself up. I mean, look at this mess. It's a battle of Glenshane Pass here. I can't imagine what would be done if something like this happened in Dublin. Indeed, it was a disaster. The pup had been shot up from the outside, and there had been bodies there hunched over our, on the floor. One of the two people had been unlucky enough to be standing on the sidewalk when the attack happened, and they were lying several feet up the road. Given the makeup of the neighborhood, Dorothy was certain the victims would turn out to be Protestants, though the police would make sure to check. Before he was attacked, the inspector had just arrived on the scene and was going to start checking the site. Since the population was not going to be cooperative on this one, this case would come down to his analysis. He started by inspecting the site the shooters started from. There are plenty of showcasings around here. Alright. So, we still could do this. Let's see. It's interactions. Three will vote. Four will vote. The terrorists won't like this. There you go. We do not negotiate with terrorists here. I mean, they're strong, middling, and very strong, but, you know, it is what it is. The right calls for unity. Oh. Despite the fact that the bill is quite left-leaning, several members of the right have unexpectedly decreed that they will put their support behind it as well to show that Ireland and its government is strong and united. That's quite a good thing for us, as we will now have a much wider base of support for this bill's passage. Ireland united. Very nice. 63%. That's not too bad. Following a bullet's path. This is. I'm going to screw this up, aren't I? I'm so going to screw this up. But, another one. Inspector Darty leaned down and picked up the cartridge by inserting his pen into the hole where the bullet had been, lifting it up. He took a closer look at it. Same as the others, he said to himself before placing it in an evidence bag. There were plenty of cartridges and bullets around, but he had seen enough of them to make a conclusion. Lieutenant, he called out to the man from the military intelligence. Got about a 38 Smith and Wesson for you. I think our suspects were using English revolvers. The Brits had used these during the war. We used uh, four, five, 
455, Weebly in her sidearms M. My goodness, said the lieutenant. Does this mean it's a false flag attack? This is an unexpected conclusion. What? Asked Dorothy in disbelief. The English are behind this. For sure, then, said the lieutenant. They supplied the weapons for this attack. This means they're behind it. Are they doing IRA attacks on the Protestants to rile them up? This might be part of their plan for takeover. Don't be daft, said Dorothy. They just use English ammo. That's all. And we use English ammo ourselves for quite a time. Doesn't mean a conspiracy when someone uses Smith & Wesson. But you know, these things do happen, said the lieutenant. I know you don't really believe the war started with the Glyvitz incident, Inspector. This was a ludicrous theory, a little inspector at first, but so many crazy things that happened in the world, it did have a shred of possibility. Let's start working from the assumption. Let's keep it under our hats for now. Um, let's probably do that one. Do we fail this one? We probably failed it. I might just go back and uh, huh, make sure that we don't lose some of these, so we'll see what happens. We'll see. Maybe do one more and pass one more thing before we finish here. 75 is not bad. Legal, labor protections, and then we'll do the right is right. While we may not always agree with Neil Blaine, 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 we can agree on something. His rule over the northern counties has been quite well. While we may not have an exact uh, idea of what's going on inside the zone, we do know that his administration has been serving Ireland well. However, in recent weeks after Blaine, he has received more clout due to his actions with both the IECC bill and the state corporation's bill. He's become a local celebrity source within Dublin. But you know him as a man who runs the northern counties and the man who is attempting to save Ireland from economic doom. Well, this may not be totally true, let us make him believe that. Blaney has recently asked for a new shipment of weapons to get delivered to the northern counties for the Irish soldiers based there. There's a chance that this causes an outcry due to the methods that Blaney uses. It's probably for the better we send him the weapons, though, as he gets the job done. Consulting the ballistics expert. The 38 out of 100 is a common cartridge, said Gerard Byrne, head of ballistics, over the noise of the lunchtime crowd at the pub. I wouldn't say it's impossible to source a revolver that uses it from a civilian source, but the most common one that uses it around here would be a British Weebly or Enfield. So, where might the IRA have acquired it? Asked Inspector Doherty as he took a bite out of his tomato farsi from England itself. Byron shook his head. England doesn't have so many stocks of these guns anymore. The vast majority of them were destroyed as part of disarmament during the post-war. Even with a switch to automatic pistols, they still keep their hands on every weapon they can get. The only source would be some sort of stock weapons kept as war trophies by an army similarly lacking in armaments. He took a bite out of his sandwich, so the Irish army storing a bunch of decommissioned ones from 1944 in a warehouse. Is it worth taking a look at, then? Asked Dorothy. Some clerk might be letting some slip on the side. Most likely, yes. That's the only source I know of, and it's most likely the one you're looking for. I say go and check the books and come back with a few addresses to knock on. Let's kick in the door. And see what happens. Alright, not bad. At least we didn't fail yet. That's good. Oh, actually, efficiency's gone. That sucks. I just want to get rid of this terrorist group. But, hey. Changing the guard. As inspect... Inspector Doherty and his men prepared to take to raid the warehouse holding the revolvers. The sound of approaching trucks got their attention. Several vehicles, all with army markings, passed by them. A small staff car in the middle parked in front of the guard up, and a man in the uniform of an army captain stepped out. Inspector Doherty asked, I'm Colonel James Kelly, military intelligence. Your investigation has now been transferred to me. This is a case of national security, and I will be the ones to prosecute it. You're taking it over, asked Doherty? The same people who leaked the guns in the first place? You expect me to believe that this isn't some sort of cover-up? You're off the case, Inspector. Now, are you going to stand there all night, or do you expect me to get my man to remove you? For a hot moment. Both men stared at each other. Doherty momentarily thought about the weight of his sidearm on his waist and started considering if he should pull it. Then, another guard officer grabbed him by his arm. Is it worth it? Amen, he said. Come on, let's get back to the station. Doherty followed him, giving the smug captain a quick glance before going back to his car. Something just isn't right here. Just is not right. Yep, another child's dirty. Ooh, goodbye. We gotta keep all that pee-pee. Oh, baby. All right, we can raise. Oh, at least we got. At least we were successful in one of these so far. Suppression efficiency seven point three. Oh, someone corrupt. Oh, that's not good. Oh, we need to root out corruption then. They have a lesser opinion of us. Uh oh. All right, we'll probably raise their salary so it become less corrupt. But we need all the civilians or all the pee-pee we can get. Oh, this is not good. Bulgaria sides with Germany. UBF terror. Sirens roar across Northern Ireland in the aftermath of the latest increasingly brazen terror attacks conducted by the Ulster Volunteer Force. Several government buildings were assaulted by bands of men who lobbed firebombs at the destruction in broad daylight, shouting UVF slogans to civilians in hiding, and beating several office workers as they attempted to evacuate before making a speedy exit ahead of the police response. Catholic nationalists across the nation are growing more and more frustrated at the audacity of these attacks and the inability to strike back at the terror group. Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. Oh, boy. Well... The right is right, and I guess the belt passes? Wait. Oh. Cool. Cool. Power is not very good, is it? Right wing power is very, very strong. Welsh Unionists, alright. Um, I, I really want to do some of this. I want to lower the corruption. Ooh. I'll do it once. Slightly corrupt, and they're still friendly, which is good. 
Oh, this is bad. This is so bad. Uh, dinner with these guys? More approval? I guess we might as well. With its cost, though. Oh, baby. Mm. Should I increase our pr the presence of German corp mega corporations here in Ireland? Please let me know in the comments below for this campaign. Oh, boy. This is not looking good for us. We we'll probably will in the end, though. 63 billion is not bad, though. Alright, so Dublin again, maybe? Oh, we can't do that. Oh, we're still doing it anyway, so it doesn't even matter. And then we'll go ahead and read about... Media regulations, increase the NSC funding. Sure, why not? The North Iron Consulary is perhaps the most disastrous success story for a great nation. The NIC is single-handedly our greatest ally in the mess that is a special situation in northern counties. Yet, contrarily, their blatant, unrestrained corruption shows no sign of slowing down or ceasing. On the other hand, though, it means that we can keep trusting them so long as the money keeps flowing. But I suppose that's going to be it for us in this episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will continue to try to root out corruption and destroy some paramilitaries. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.